Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There are certain patterns of letters and numbers that make the hearts of synth, groovebox and drum machine enthusiasts jump. Our world would not be the same without SHs, a zero with two neighbors or the combination of both. It goes without saying that the manufacturers of these legendary pieces of gear treat this heritage with utmost respect and, just kidding, of course, they slap the money printer go brrr numerology on every chromatic doorbell. One of these magic product lines is Yamaha's CS range. And while there is a reason for the cult-like following one-of-a-kind synthesizers like the CS80 have gathered, most of us will have to make do with humble instruments like today's CS1X. To put this in a historical perspective, the CS1X was reviewed in the same issue of Sound on Sound as the Roland MC303. And although these 90s relics are based on different concepts, they had the same mission – bringing electronic sounds to the masses. While the MC303 found its way into the bedrooms of teenagers trying to reboot their brain chemistry after a weekend of partying, the more reputable CS1X was, at least here in Austria, bought in bulk by every educational institution that dealt with music production. Of course, nobody wanted to use them. We wanted Nord Leads, Axis Viruses and, as a result, a whole generation of synth people is still suffering from 90s dance rompler PTSD. At least, we had an excuse for our music to suck. At the first glance, the Yamaha CS1X is ticking all the boxes. Sleek design, a proper keybed, hands-on controls, including user-definable knobs and everything you need for making music with your Apple Quadra. There is ample connectivity for external controls, but only a stereo out. Before we get down to the nitty gritty, let's marvel at some of the classic tones, like the piano sound every top 40 band used for the intro of Robbie Williams' Let Me Entertain You, fat arpeggiator patterns, Lush pads Punchy drum kits And many many more. The reasonably deep, sample-based synth engine can be tweaked further using a parameter editing matrix that looks more intimidating than it actually is. There are two kinds of voices in the CS1X. The performance mode offers a fully tweakable polyphonic voice consisting of four layers, each of them based on one of the built-in samples. Every single layer can be mangled individually using the filter, three envelopes, LFO and the multi-FX unit. These settings are relative to what's going on on the knobs, so don't be surprised if, for example, cutoff doesn't do what you would expect from it on certain sounds. The other kind of voice is based on a set of XG and therefore general MIDI compatible samples, taken from what I assume is the MU50. These standardized sounds cannot be tweaked in the same depth as the main voice, but they allow for the best rendition of the Rise of the Triad soundtrack I've heard to date. The multimode is 16 part multi timbral, but restricted to the XG tones and you can't save any settings. You can circumvent some of these limitations by using the performance mode, which not only offers the aforementioned main synth voice, but also XG sounds on MIDI channel 5 to 16. The user manual offers an introduction inspired by the good book, but mostly covers all the things you would have found out yourself anyway. There is a second manual called the blue book and this is where all the magic happens, including detailed rundowns of most functions and many many sysx strings. You can morph between two different settings of the same patch using scenes and the arpeggiator is simple yet powerful. As there is no internal sequencer or sampler, Yamaha reserved some space on the keyboard's surface for an SU or QY10 and you can make an educated guess which one is going to be in the second jam today. 
Build quality is rugged but not indestructible and an unhealthy proportion of sellers on reverb need to get a goddamn life. The CS1X is a versatile and powerful tool for live performance and studio production. But you know, 90 stands music, Rampler, Yamaha, do I need to say more? You have already heard the CS1X in our little intro tune. Not great, not terrible. I wanna know if the filter is as ear piercing as I remember it. Okay, I most probably won't get famous for that. The filter was certainly not built with such extreme settings in mind and sounds distinctly digital, but it stays mellow over the entire range. I like the drum kit, but I would have to dig a lot deeper to make the XG tones sound more exciting. Or maybe take some piano lessons. Let's give the arpeggiator a go in this more complex drum loop based setup. The SU-10 sampler looks really nice in its dedicated place and you can squeeze some impressive patterns from the CS1X arpeggiator. I'm not sure if it's a bug or a feature that these patterns cannot be transmitted via MIDI. It doesn't happen often that I have a hard time finding the genre for an episode's final track, but today I really had to struggle in order to come up with this plain vanilla neo-vintage hypnagogic synth pop routine. I think it has become obvious that the Yamaha CS1X and I don't really click. It didn't work when I was a young student and it seems like it hasn't got much better ever since. The reasons for this are manifold. First of all, I consider the CS1X a keyboard player synth and it's not a secret that them black and white keys are not exactly a strength of mine. The synth makes it very hard to hide sloppy playing and a lack of expression. What is more, even after having wrapped my head around the principles of the Rompler engine, I didn't find it very pleasing to program sounds and keep the creative juices flowing. It goes without saying that seasoned players with a profound knowledge of sound synthesis in general and the CS1X in particular will be able to get top-notch results. All that being said, it is funny that in these fast-changing times some things remain the same. Old school manufacturers like Yamaha keep on releasing hardware synth, the controversy will most probably never stop and I can still use the CS1X as an excuse when my music sucks. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.